So the reason we're working backwards like this is because we have to know the consequences of our actions before we can make any sort of decision, uh, which means that you know, we have to figure out if we do the, any of these different options, they're going to see what we've done. They're going to have a chance to respond. How do we think they're going to respond? Based on that, now I can choose realistically between my options. So let's take this as an example. Go ahead and try to figure out what the Nash equilibrium is for this game. Remember, you're going to work backwards, try to figure out how they're going to respond in each of these cases. Based on that, you're going to be able to figure out what player A is going to want to do, what's their best response to that. All right, let's solve this out. So we're going to work backwards. We're going to ask ourselves, what are B's best responses? So if we find ourselves up here, if A has chosen to go up, then B can go up as well and get 10, or can go down and get 15. 15 is better than 10, and so we're going to circle the down here. It's usually better to circle the edge, as opposed to in the uh, uh, simultaneous games where we circled the numbers for the payouts. Usually it makes more sense in these games to circle the actions. It just works out better. All right, so now we know if A goes up, how is B going to respond? We know their best response. Now, what if B if A went down? If A went down, then B has this choice to make down here. B can go up and get two, or down and get five. Five is better than two. And so we anticipate that B will go down over there. Now, A knows the consequences of their actions and can make a reasonable choice between the two options they have. A says, if I go up, then B will go down and I will get zero. If I go down, B will go down and I will get four. Four is better than zero. Those are the only two numbers that matter for making this decision. I don't care what B is going to get. I don't care about the other options that I'm not going to touch because those aren't, aren't going to happen. Too bad. Uh, and so five, I'm sorry, four is better than zero. So I'm going to go down as well. We follow along the tree and we come to this as our outcome. Any questions about that? So something that, oh, is that a question? So the Nash equilibrium is for A and 5 Correct, yeah, that's the payout for the two players. There's something else to note, right? Sort of like in the prisoner's dilemma case, this is a situation where the Nash equilibrium is definitely not the best outcome. They both rather make the switch up here than up, up uh, and yet they don't. So we'll talk about why that is in a bit, right? Or right now, I guess. So clearly, up, up is the best outcome. This is definitely where they'd rather be. Uh, they'd rather serve, they'd rather be here than here. Um, but it's not the Nash equilibrium. Why is it not the Nash equilibrium? Well, because we know that if we get to this point right here, if A goes up, it's in B's interest to go down instead. So B can't really get us up here. If B's going to choose not to go up here, which means that A can't really trust them to go up there. So they're not going to try. In an ideal world, B could convince A. If B could convince A, hey, if you go up, I'm going to go up too. I promise. I'm really going to do it. We're going to get to that 110. Uh, you know, we're not going to be at the four or five. 110, 110 is better than four and five. So, you know what, Sean, I'll just stick to it. Please believe me, go up, I'll go up too. Right? Um, however, the problem is that this is rational. Once A plays up, it's too late to go back. And now it's B's turn to make a decision. And there's nothing that forces them to follow through on their work. Right? Once A is like, all right, fine, I believe you. Let's do this. Right? Let's go up. Now it's B, your turn, follow through on your promise. And B's like, well, you know, I could follow through my promise and get 10. Or I can break my promise and get 15. 15 is better than 10, and so I'm going to go ahead and break my promise. Right? Uh, it's in their interest to go back on their work. Which means uh, this, and people, and what we have is what a commitment problem. We have the inability to convincingly commit to actions in advance that are against our interests, which can actually lead us all to worse outcomes. Not just the person who is being betrayed, in this case, person in player A, but also the person doing the betraying, player B. Player B would be better off if they were trustworthy. Because if they were trustworthy, they could get to the up-up, which is better for them too than the down-down. They can. So there has to be some way of enforcing such a promise. Otherwise, a lot of games like this are going to fall apart, which is, of course, 
very bad, right? There are a lot of games you can think about uh, where that are strategic in nature, where the best outcome for everybody relies on some sort of cooperation or trust. Okay. What this is saying is that that's going to be really hard to achieve. So, a couple things about this. One, I mean, obviously, in the real world, there's plenty of actual cooperation that goes on. So, what's going on? What's the disconnect between what I'm saying here and what's going, what happens in the real world? Two, uh, is this really that dour? So, for one, for one thing, uh, we do actually see cooperation in the real world. Why is that? Well, a couple things. One, people are not uh, people. So people are not perfectly rational game maximizers. We manage to sometimes stick to our word, even though it is not rational to do so. But that relies on people not realizing what is best for themselves, which is you know possible. It holds a lot of things together, but uh, you're not sure how much you want to rely on. Two. This is not necessarily saying that cooperation is impossible. It just means that you need to be aware when it is not in somebody's interest to follow through on their word, because that means that you might want to try changing the game. Okay. A lot of the you know, sort of cooperation doesn't happen results that we see in game theory like this, the, the implication is not necessarily that people will never cooperate, but rather try to think about how to make a game in which people will cooperate and play that instead. 